Hello and welcome to the Sussex Smuggler. I'm your host, Captain James Bollinger, and today we'll be having a little talk about the HMS Warrior 1860 that I went to go and see the other weekend at Portsmouth Dockyard. What a fabulous um, showcase she is. Um, HMS Warrior, in case you didn't know, um, uh, was a, a technological innovation at its time. Uh, and what it was about was trying to um, create uh, naval supremacy at the, in the Victorian era, um, despite many changing tides of naval warfare, warfare during the 19th century and the reign of Queen Victoria. Uh, now, HMS Warrior uh, was considered first of the ironclad series of ships, uh, and you could argue that um, she was built in the traditional sense of a sailing ship evolving into steam. Uh, there's a there's a picture of her that I took down at uh, the dockyard, and you can see the the usual mast arrangements. But below that, you can see um, funnels, uh, a couple of funnels there along the the, uh, the deck there that let the steam out from the steam engines deep in the hull that uh, was powering the ship along at the time. Um, uh, but uh, talking to um, some of the, uh, the, the the officers on board, and we've got an interview later with uh, midshipman uh, Harry Murray, um, who, who gives an account of what life was like on uh, Warrior at the time. Um, it was very interesting. Um, but we'll get to that in a, in a bit. Let me just uh, talk you through this. Uh, and, of course, in the mid-19th century, nations were engaged at the time in a race to build the most powerful and technological advanced warships. The Industrial Revolution transformed shipbuilding and a new era of naval supremacy was on the horizon. Enter the mighty HMS Warrior, a groundbreaking vessel that would redefine the standards of naval warfare. Well, I just thought I'd uh, share some of these interesting facts about HMS Warrior. Whilst we have a look around the outside of her, she has uh, a length of 418 feet, a beam of 48 feet, uh, a displacement of 9,210 tonnes. That's incredible. She has three different speeds, or three different top speeds anyway, 14.4 knots. That's under steam alone. Under sail, uh, a respectable 13 knots. That's just using the sails. Sail and steam combined, 17.2 knots. So uh, you can see where you would save money if you had a windy day and probably look after the environment. But I doubt if that was at the uh, forefront of every Victorian's mind at the time. The hull varies between 5.8 inch to 1 inch wrought iron plate. Armour is a four and a half inch raw iron plate backed by 18 inches of teak. Um, the engine is a pen double acting twin cylinder and it produces something like 5,469 um, horse in terms of horsepower. Uh, it has a sh uh, 4,100 shaft horsepower with 10 box boilers. She can carry 853 tonnes of coal. She has 37,546 square feet of sail spread between all the masts on the ship and the uh, bow sprit at the front. In terms of guns, 26 times 68 pounders, 10 times 110 pounders, 4 times 10 pounders. Uh, if you do visit Warrior, you'll see lots of handguns, rifles, carbines, cutlasses, all sorts of things uh, about the ship. And a grand total of crew, 706 men were on board. No women were allowed. Uh, that's HMS Warrior. Well, there you go. That uh, kind of puts things into uh, perspective, doesn't it? Enjoy the rest of the video, folks. We are in the captain's quarters. Dining table. Lamp is on HMS Warrior. Pan round over here. Very comfortable for the officers, of course. Nice sofa. 
and if you need to write any letters home or orders. 1861 HMS Warrior was the first iron hulled armoured ship and she represented a leap forward in naval technology. The transition from wooden to iron construction marked a pivotal moment in maritime history. Warrior's hull was made of iron plates providing greater protection against enemy fire and she was pro powered by both steam and sail giving her unparalleled flexibility on the high seas. But what truly set HMS Warrior apart was the revolutionary design. She was not only a formidable warship, but she also had was a luxurious floating fortress with sleek lines and an impressive array of armaments. She was a symbol of the naval might. The combination of steam power and traditional sail, sailing rigging allowed her to na navigate both open seas and narrow channels with ease. And we'll have a look at um, some of the, well, it's luxury for some, but not for all. Uh, let's get that quite clear. And that kind of takes me to, there we go. This is the what was it was like for the um, high-ranking officers on board HMS Warrior. That's their dining uh, table in the great cabin. Uh, and their quarters were to the right <clears throat> and to the left of that table. And behind where you see the picture and uh, the doors is where the uh, captain would uh, sleep. And that was his quarters right there. But um, I think it would be worth now probably going over to midshipman Harry Murray and um, ask him what he thought of life on board HMS Warrior 1860. Midshipman Murray. Hello there, my name's Midshipman Murray, I'm an officer in training on board HMS Warrior and uh, currently in charge today because our other officers turned up which is uh, obviously quite nice of them. There's usually 40 of us on board but 39's obviously not shown up. Now press ganging as you know it is illegal so uh, but the upper class haven't got that memory yet obviously because I'm board fourth, two degrees and I'm here so first you're air, second's your spare, third clergy or the spare fourth army clergy navy so uh, obviously in the army you buy your rank though so be a complete idiot in front of a light brigade send them into battle they're not going to come back oh that sounds like a poem actually spare's too busy writing a book about himself um so that's all good on my part but another four years i'm off to new scotland can't wait i've had enough of the old one so i'm going to go to uh, what the french call in canada but for the time being i'm on the scariest warship in the world you shoot our ship it bounces off I can fire off all of my guns on one side of the vessel at the same time without tipping over. That's blimmin' convenient. The gun there, 60, uh, the 68 pounder, uh, we reload every 55 seconds, which the rest of the world do it in 90, which is what we did uh, 60 years ago at Trafalgar, so it uh, kind of shows uh, how far behind they are. You've also got the Armstrong gun at the end. That does five miles max, uh, more than likely going to blow up when you do it at that range but you know we've got a nice diversity of guns on board this ship we can also ram vessels so if you're on a wooden ship we can actually ram straight through the middle of you which is something we actually did we uh, crashed into our admiral's vessel the royal oak got stuck inside it for uh, 20 minutes uh, that genuinely happened and um, that wasn't great they uh, fully seem astern to get out of that uh, we're also the fastest ship in the world 17 and a fifth knots now uh, if you like your pistons nine foot at the trunk end don't know what that means but my specialty seamanship, you see, which is slightly odd because the engine is uh, currently taking over. So half of the reason that we have sails on board Warriors is because it actually looks quite nice. It's the most Victorian thing ever, really. And we know it works, the whole bounce off thing. What we did is built an iron armor plate off the ship and we shot it with a 68 pounder and it did indeed just bounce clean off, which was a, a great thing. But that is the most British thing ever, shooting your own vessel. Where, you know, it's great being on board. Thank you there to uh, midshipman Harry Murray for his testament of what life was like on HMS Warrior for him. Uh, but anyway, go, it, uh, as, as the technological landscape continued to evolve, so did naval tactics. Soon, faster and more heavily armed vessels emerged, and this relegated Warrior to secondary roles. By the late 19th century, she was decommissioned 
and repurposed as a floating barracks, a training ship, and later on an oil hulk. As the years passed, HMS Warrior's significance in naval history was almost forgotten. However, in the 20th century, a group of dedicated individuals undertook the monumental task of restoring this maritime marvel to its former glory. Today, HMS Warrior stands proudly as a museum ship in Portsmouth, England, allowing visitors to step back in time and experience the grandeur of the 19th century naval warfare. In conclusion, the story of HMS Warrior 1860 is a captivating chapter in the annals of naval history, from her groundbreaking design to her role in the changing dynamics of maritime warfare. Warrior stands as a testament to human innovation and the relentless pursuit of naval supremacy. Well, I'd just like to thank you for joining us on this um, video. It's been terrific bringing you this presentation today. And uh, do go down to um, the historic dockyard at uh, Portsmouth. Uh, my advice would be if you can take some sort of Tesco's coupon or uh, I think points uh, that give you discounted entrance uh, discounts and uh, uh money off of exhibitions and things do do that because that's what i did uh, to get in a bit cheaper uh, or you can visit i believe individual uh, exhibits such as hms warrior and then that's it you, you cannot you can't go anywhere else only the free zone so um have a look i'll put the uh, the description uh, uh, in the description a link to the uh, uh, the historic dockyard below and you can check it out for yourself the ticket prices how to get there um, I found it quite easy. What I, what I did was uh, I parked up at the park and ride uh, out on the outskirts, outskirts of town for four pounds. I've got the bus in that, that is included in your parking ticket. And obviously when I was finished, I got it back out again. So um, that was probably the easiest way for me. The train, yeah, I believe, is not far from there, as is all the ferry terminals. So, um, yeah, do check it out. It's a fantastic place. You'll never get it around, get around the uh, historic dockyard in one day i mean i only done a few things in the day that i was there so um yeah terrific place put it in your in your bookmark because uh uh i, I really recommend getting down there. It's a terrific museum and um that's it really from me today so uh i'll leave you with this outro the usual one and of course a mention to reavers gallows for this one and if i haven't said it already it might be a bit late but have a happy new year See you on the channel again soon.